Hello and welcome to Delphus. We are in America's friendliest city for this week's edition of Faith and Friends on the Road alongside Mark Kuntz and Zach Bowers, Jennifer Beck. I'm Andy Lynch. It's going to be a fun day. It is. It's currently a wet day. We I'm chose, feeling there's water coming from the sky. Yeah. To come to Stadium Park, which is a great place. I hear you have a history with Stadium Park. I Zach. do. I have many fond memories here. Grew up here in Stadium Park, played baseball just across the way, swimming pool behind us, a lot of things to do here at Stadium Park, and it was a blast. You know, one of the things I like about Stadium Park is the fact that the improvements we've seen at Stadium Park over the last six, seven years, they, they've really put a lot invested in the community here, invested in the future of the community here at Stadium Park. Did you go down that very water slide in the back I there, did. Zach? I did. I went down as many ways as they would let me and maybe sometimes ways they wouldn't could, let could me. Could you go head first? I, you could in my day. I don't know. Anymore. Probably not anymore. Would I'd... you like to try it today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are we allowed? Well, if we had time, <laughs> I don't think there's any water in the pool. We maybe. have a great show scheduled for us that doesn't include water slides, but includes some other great things, right, Mark? Yeah, if you've been watching uh, the City Churches series here on TV44, you've seen some of the great Catholic churches in the city of Brooklyn, some of the historical architecture there. Well, of course, St. John's Church here in Delphi has got some amazing historical architecture as well. We'll take a look at uh, that. We'll also see the history of the postal office as we go to the post museum in Delphi's end you can't go to America's friendliest city without stopping at the creamery mm. we will finish up the show there and we might stay there for hours and hours <laughs> we will brave the rain so that we can <laughs> enjoy some ice cream that's right but first as always we're going to start with our scripture of the day and it is John 1 1 through 5 which says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. In the very beginning was God with the Word. That's right. Well, our beginning has started, and now we're ready to move indoors so we can get a little drier. We're going to start our show off at St. John's Catholic Church, take a look at some history and the beauty of that incredible building. Its architecture is unique, historic, and beautiful. St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church in Delphi, founded in 1844 in a nearby cabin, this building has been home to St. John since 1881. The Romanesque style causes it to stand out in northwest Ohio's region of large churches, rounded arches instead of high peaks, high rounded ceilings designed to be uplifting, both physically and spiritually, and designed to spread a message to all who enter. Let's start our tour of the beautiful church right at the front, and the front doors. The life of Christ, God's creation, and the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross. All of that told right here on these two locally crafted copper doors. But the symbolism and history doesn't stop there. Let's go inside. Look at the high arches, the natural light, the colors, all chosen with purpose, chosen more than a century ago. The church building, held sacred then, is still held sacred today. Renovations over the years have been necessary, but church officials are dedicated to preserving history, like the communion rail, which was protected during the last round of renovations and is still a focal point of the church. It's just one of many things which will always link parishioners and the Delphus community to the beginning, when a man named Ferdinand came to America from Germany and then arranged to bring his brother, also a priest. That launched where the church is today. You know, the parish is around 180 years old, this building itself, though, isn't quite that old, but this has obviously been here quite a long time. Sir, yeah, it's our third church, and this was dedicated in 1881. It's been through a renovation, we think, about every uh, 20, I think 25 years on average. Something significant, we do some sort of significant improvement, and uh, it just needs updating. So, 1881, and it's in really good shape, and people have taken very good care of it. We use it a lot. You know, there's. There's mass here every day. There's usually a couple of funerals a week. There's usually a wedding or two, uh, four masses on the weekend. There's thousands of people that come through here every day for every week. Among the ways you've been able to keep the church relevant, you open the church up to allow people to walk, to use it as an indoor walking space. Yeah, the church is open uh, until 9 o'clock every night except Sunday for people to pray and to walk. Um, some people you find just sitting in a pew or up by the tabernacle. Other times you'll see people just taking laps, and, and we call it health walking. Uh, but sometimes they're praying, sometimes they're catching up, sometimes they're uh, just enjoying the, the place that is really probably their favorite place on earth. And 
uh, it's it's kind of neat to come over here at any kind of given time, and you'll see you'll see walkers. And finally, there's a lot of beautiful art in here, a lot of beautiful paintings, stained glass windows. If you could pick out one piece that maybe speaks to you the most, what mm -hmm. would that be? I I'm in here every day, and I look at the skies and the stained glass windows every day. They're just uh, there's something about the the colors and the skies and the windows that just captures me each and every day. But every day a new detail also gets me. But uh, I would say that every day I look at the skies. All right, thank you very much. You're Father very Dave Reinhardt from St. John's You're Church in Delphus. Well, thank you, Mark. You know, not far down the road, just here on Main Street, is another unique attraction right here in Delphus, Ohio. One of three in the country, wow. I understand the Postal Museum. Yeah, we're going to take a look inside. Jennifer has a tour and an interview with the man that runs this amazing establishment that looks back on the history of the postal system. Thank you, Andy and Zach. And I am standing in what could be considered a hidden gem here in Delphus. Like you said, Zach, this is one of just three museums in the country dedicated solely to the history of the post office and the postal traffic system. I am with Gary Levitt, who has a long history himself with the post office. Gary, why is it so important to preserve the postal history? Well, we felt it was very important for people to understand what role the Postal Service played in the development of their lives. We go back and, and start showing them from the colonial period when letters didn't even have stamps and they were used sealing wax and how important it was for everyone to communicate back and forth. I mean, if you look at your own industry and the industries that are coming up today from Twitter and Facebook and everyone is trying so hard to make it instantaneous communication. Well, that was a dream of the Postal Service right from the start. Uh, you know, post offices themselves became the cultural hubs of a town. They, uh, people would congregate in the morning to get their mail. Uh, in fact, that's how even city delivery got started many years ago, was all of the people from the women from the Civil War waiting for word from their loved ones were sitting in the Cleveland Post Office uh, waiting for word. And the Cleveland Postmaster said, I, I can't have all these hundreds of people in my lobby every day. Go home and we'll deliver the mail. And that's how city delivery actually started. National history and local history here at the Postal Museum in Delphus. Gary, tell me a little bit about the area we're in now. This has some definite connections to Delphus, right? Yes, it does. Um, the uh, backdrops that you see are for the period of time of the vehicles that we have. And this is the old Munner Farm, and to my right is also the old State Farm, the uh, Hurston Farm out on State Road. This is a 1910 sleigh that was used in the area. Uh, it comes off the runners very easily, and we turn it into a coach. And uh, it, it was used throughout uh, this area for rural delivery after 1896, of course, when it started. Next stop on our mail tour takes us to another vehicle used for mail. Explain what this one is about and where it came from. Okay, this actually came out of the Dayton, Ohio post office area. Uh, it was a 1906 Harrington roll coach. Everything on it except the canvas is original, so you can even see how the things were constructed at that time. This was, uh, you would spend all day going down the road and feeling the vibration because the roads weren't very well built in those days. And this has been around since then. You know, in just my few minutes of being here at this museum, I am amazed just by seeing the history of postal travel. And that is just a tiny part of what you can learn about by visiting here. Mail by train. You've got that here as well. Yes, that's an actual to scale apartment. It's a 15 foot compartment that was used on the Akron Telfus Youngstown on the old ACUNY Railroad. And it went back and forth every day uh, delivering mail to all of those cities. And the train didn't stop. So mm -hmm. they caught the mail on the fly and threw it off while they were rolling. So we go from the trains and we move just down a little bit here in the museum. And now we're in three-wheeled cars. I think we've jumped a, a gener we've jumped an era here, but I'm continually amazed by what, what is here in Delphus. Well, these vehicles span from the early 50s to the late 60s, where the train went from 1850 to about 1972. 
And we kept developing more and more vehicles. Uh, you'll come through and you can see some of the scooters we've used, bicycles. And then we even talk about some of the wild things we've done, like camel mail and missile mail and uh, pneumatic mail. And uh, it's, it, we've tried everything under the sun. Well, in a, in a generation where people are using so many different communication means than just mail, I think it is so important to preserve this history. What an incredible location right in your backyard, really, a great summer trip. If people want to come and visit this museum, what do they need to do? All they need to do is uh, come in and uh, give us a call at uh, 419-303-5482, which is our phone number. They can look on our website, which is postalhistorymuseum.org. Uh, and we're open every, every day, Tuesday through Friday, and then on Saturdays from 10 to 2. And we uh, take groups at any time they like to come in. So all they have to do is give us a buzz, put a note on our website. We get it every day. All right, Gary, thank you so much. Now, we're going to stay in Delphus. Don't go away. We've got food. Food's coming up. Andy and Zach are going to test try a few important, well-known food items here in Delphus. But first, we're going to take a quick jump to Pandora. Dancy is in the studio with Dr. Daryl Groman, who's received a really special honor. Well, thank you so much. Joining me now is Dr. Daryl Groman, and Dr. Groman is um, with Groman Vision out of Pandora, and he has recently um, been told that um, he has received a tremendous recognition from The Ohio State University, and uh, we want to welcome you to the show and also offer our congratulations. You are one of the top 100 notable alumni in the OSU College of Optometry. Quite an honor. Uh, to God be the glory. It's not for my own personal recognition, but an opportunity that I'm being recognized yeah. uh, for helping people to see a lot better. Exactly. One at a time for um, ne next year will be 30 years of, of private practice. Good for you. Well, you are doing his work in helping us be able to see. And um, it is quite a gift that you have. And so let's talk about... Um, your honor, I know that you were surprised by it, weren't you? I was completely surprised. I read over the email a number of times before <laughs> it made any sense to me, and I called up the college. But part of the recognition is because in 1987, I helped start up the Ohio chapter of the Volunteer Optometric Services to Humanity, VOSH Ohio, uh, where we collect used eyeglasses, and we have a sorting center in Pandora, we're in the church basement. Glasses are used eyeglasses that have been donated by Lions Clubs and optometrists and ophthalmologists and church groups. And anywhere you might see eyeglasses are collected. Yeah. Most end up in Pandora in the basement of the United Methodist Church. And without fanfare, over two million glasses have been sorted since 1988. And we've sent out 42 missions. And I've been on 12. Wow and to help people to see better in different places around the world, in Latin America and Africa and uh, India and Eastern Europe. Yeah. Um, it's been an awesome opportunity to help people see better. Well, we're gonna bring you on um, later to talk about, to talk more about that ministry, but I guess I kind of wanna take you back when um, you were a child um, and how you got into optometry. What, what was your calling to this field? Um, a significant factor in my life was I was very nearsighted growing up in school and wearing glasses all the time and I found an awesome change happened in my life when I started to wear contact lenses mm -hmm. uh, going from lenses that for somebody who's nearsighted when you look through a nearsighted lens the world looks smaller and clearer and smaller but to wear contact lenses opened up the uh, peripheral vision and and I found that that was, um, pun intended, an eye-opening experience. <laughs> Definitely. And, you know, there are so many children who do wear glasses, need to wear glasses. Um, and so, but it takes, it takes smarts and science, it takes a lot of, um, you know, hard work and math, too, I'm sure. So what made you choose Ohio State? Ohio State uh, College of Optometry is the only optometry college in, in 
Ohio, mm -hmm. and so that limits. Kind of li okay, but you're uh, a big Buckeye fan. I'm uh, hoping. Go Bucks! Okay, of course. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so the, the restroom in the office has the Ohio State um, logos, and I'm probably yes. offending the Michigan. Well, that's okay. Fans, we feel sorry for I them hope that I, I hope they'll come back to the office. <laughs> exactly. So um, your job must be so gratifying, though, because as you have your own personal testimony about your vision, um, you know, your, your vision, and I can say this because um, I am legally blind without my contacts and, and glasses, I so um, treasure and value my, my eyesight. And um, without it, I know that my life would go on, but it would be different. Vision is a key factor that's not well understood even in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, we're shown uh, the model of the human eye uh, from fifth grade through professional schools in any area of interest with a developing human being. But what's usually missing from that picture of the solitary eye that shows the structures, the cornea, back to the retina and all the parts is what's rarely shown as the second eye, the second eyeball. Okay. Because what's typically not thought is that the two eyes don't typically work together in tandem. Oh. And there are a lot of individuals who may have 20-20 acuity, but they're not using their vision to their maximum uh, potential. Uh, an archaeologist might say, if you don't look for it, you're not going to find it. And uh, one easy task you can do, because I have a special interest with kids who do struggle in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's a, a big area of special interest that oftentimes near vision is not looked at. And so what you could do at home is to take a pencil or a pen, or I might use a, a target, to slide it like a slide trombone on eye level, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm wiggling my That's hands. Okay. But, but if you bring a target close and you look to see where the two eyes are going, the two eyes are not necessarily looking at the same place. That's called a convergence, and pursuit is a task of tracking or following, and one needs to make a precise movement from one target to the other. And so when you read text, you have to start at the top of the page and go down and also go from left to right mm -hmm. in a self-directed uh, eye movements. And that's not always looked for. Interesting. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We are going to bring Dr. Groman back um, later on, and we're going to talk more about his um, ministry, and I can call it that, with uh, children as um, he practices optometry in the village of Pandora. So we're going to turn it back to you, and we'll be back with Dr. Groman later on. Well, thank you, Dancy. As we promised, we are back here in Delphus. And yes, Andy and Zach are coming up very soon with food, and Mark's going to check out some of that as well. We are at the Creamery, and it doesn't matter where you live. I think if you are from Northwest Ohio, you've heard of the Creamery. Of course, there's great ice cream everywhere, but there's just something very unique about the Creamery here in Delphus. And part of it may be it's been in the family for a very long time. Dan, the owner, is here. Tell me a little bit about the history of the Creamery here. Um, my sister bought it in uh, 1996. Uh, my brother bought it from her um, a little bit later and then a si my sister, other sister bought it from him and then I bought it in 2012. Uh, the creamery was originally started by Jerry Wessel in 1982. 1982, it's been a staple here and one of the uh, staple things are, go ahead and bring that over here, this, wow, is this a 12 dip, 8 dip, 15 dip? This is a three dip and three dip cone. What, what kind of ice cream is this one? Black cherry. How many flavors do you have? 32 hard dip flavors. 32 hard dip flavors. All right. Well, this is what I've got to uh, consume. We are going to send it outside to Andy, Mark, and Zach because there's some new items that they are going to uh, try out. One thing they're not trying out is the new Dole products, right? Tell me about those. The Dole products are, we have six flavors and they're lactose free for the the customer that can't have the dairy product and that way the family can come out and they can all can enjoy something and what are some of the other new products the things that we are going to let them test try in a moment uh we have the new cappuccino crunch mocha flavor and the french vanilla flavor 
All right, we're gonna head it outside. I'm gonna dive into this and we'll let them see what other th del delicacies they can find. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We are, of course, over here in front oh, of the creamery we're... enjoying some, Mark, we are on. Mm. You can see here, Mark right. immediately grabbed the Buckeye Parfait, a variety of options here that we can't wait to dive into. The guys already have. Andy, your thoughts? Really good. I got the French vanilla, cappuccino crunch. Shouldn't and that be Freedom Vanilla? Well, we've got here. Freedom. Cappuccino crunch, mm, French vanilla food, flavor, Brandon. mocha Buckeye. flavor, and, Buckeye. and more Buckeye. food is arriving. This is oh, a delicious. chicken sandwich that just looks incredible, actually. Pictures. You love shredded chicken. I love shredded chicken sandwiches. Mark, take us through the Buckeye Blitz and the uh, variety of flavors there. Well, you've got uh, the whipped cream. I'm trying to get down into the parfait level. Uh, you got some caramel in there, some peanut butter. It's a, uh, you know, it's it's a, uh, it's like a, a puck candy Buckeye, Buckeye mm, candy. Looks so phenomenal. I, you got the peanut butter, the chocolate, vanilla, absolutely delicious. We haven't even talked about the banana split right here. Andy's getting ready to dive into. It is very, Absol very healthy. Massive. It's got a banana. Is there eight, apple? It looks like eight bananas in there. I don't know. Of course, all the portion sizes is just great value for your buck here at the creamery. You grew up, you grew up coming here, I right? I did there? grew up. I grew up right here in Delvis. And I tell you what, my favorite story. I had a paper route in the area, and every <laughs> every week, every day, this woman, a kind woman, would give me a tip so I could come right here to the creamery and enjoy some ice cream. Just one of my favorite childhood memories, and you guys can see why, right? You're not even eating. I, I want to. I'm, I'm trying to facilitate here. I introduced these guys to the creamery just a year ago, I think. You did right? after a football mm -hmm. preview. After yep. a football preview show, and I think that their lives have never been the same. See, so the good. more we eat, he's got to talk. So <laughs> I'm going to take a few bites here. You guys can take mm. take it away. But I mean, you know, one of the things you, you always know about the creamery, there's going to be a long line. That tells you people will come and they will wait because it is quality ice cream. And this is this is good stuff. They do a great job at moving you through, though. And brand new place in back if you want to come and sit. Some tables. Oh, that to new? Just, oh enjoy. Okay. Maybe bring your family out. Of course, the kids are always going to love it, but fun for the entire family. You can come enjoy some wonderful ice cream. And like you can see, this chicken sandwich, which we haven't been dug into, <laughs> not just ice cream here, but phenomenal food all around. I'm just eating. So you guys continue <laughs> to have a great discussion amongst yourselves, and I'll continue to eat. We can discuss mm. all of these different options. I think we're going to Now, the only time, good time to eat a banana is in a banana split. Really? Not a banana fan? I don't like the texture, but when you hide it with all the ice cream <laughs> and the cherry and, yeah. Well, before we go, guys, what is your favorite ice cream treat specifically here at the creamery? It can be any of these options or anything that you've had. I might be saying the banana split. Really? I, I, I've had before, like, the strawberry shortcake, and that's phenomenal. The milkshakes are gigantic. But I really like the banana split, all the different flavors. Mark, the Buckeye you, well, Parfait. You can't go wrong with a waffle cone. This is true. You cannot go wrong with a waffle cone. One of the few options they have here, of course, maybe you'll see a shot of the waffle cone here. I think one dip ends up being five dips. I don't know. It's, it's huge right there on the waffle cone. So Does anyone actually order the three dip? Did we know what actually comes I've in the three dip? I've heard tales, tall tales, legends about three dips. It's like four seventeen dip scoops, cream. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're being shown. I think it's two feet high at least. But yes, it is just a ton of ice cream for your for your dollar here. We just we should try that. Maybe in a moment we'll we'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a subliminal hint to well, our to the manager. Wrap us up. <laughs> On our first road trip of the season, we've enjoyed Delphus and oh, St. Yeah. John's Church, the Postal Museum, mm -hmm. and of course, no trip to Delphus is complete without a trip to the uh, creamery. Right. Mm -hmm. Before we go though, Zach, can you uh, wrap us up in prayer? And we can do that as soon as I clear his ice cream. We forgot to pray before our meal. Yeah. Let's do that right now. God, we come before you and we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to enjoy the weather and the creation that you've uh, put before us, that we can take some time and just enjoy things like the ice cream or being outside in this beautiful day, we pray for our viewers, God, that you would hear uh, each of their requests and their praises, God, that they would uh, see WTLW as a way to just edify them in their faith and to continue um, witnessing the gospel. So, God, we ask and thank you for what you're doing right here on Faith and Friends and WTLW and through our viewers. In your name, amen. amen. All right, that's going to do it for us, guys. Well, I hope the guys enjoy that wonderful looking ice cream. I know my ice cream cone certainly is quite the treat. 
We want to take a moment to remind you that we are currently accepting auction donations, so please gather those up and bring those to our TV station Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'd love to have a chance to talk with you as well, and thank you in advance for your partnership with us as we prepare for another fun and great auction. Call us if you have any questions about items to donate, 419-339-4444. Ask for myself, Jennifer, or Michelle. Don't forget the auction is September 6th, and we hope to see you there as well. Well, we leave you today remembering our verse of the day, John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. We leave you with that final thought and remind you that Jesus is the light, and he shines out over all darkness. And remember, in any situation you're in, Jesus is the one that can carry you through. Thanks for joining us on Faith and Friends. Have a great week.